Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from T and J, and you know, last season it was kind of a disappointment, but we exceeded expectations. You know, the goal is really to get better every year. We went to the wild card year our first year, went to the NLCS the next year, so we got better. So, you know, we didn't need to make too many adjustments this off season. We just need to make some minor tweaks. So. Starting pitching, so we made one move here and that was to add Lance Lynn into our rotation. He's gonna slot into that four spot. Geronimo Reyes, he's coming, don't worry, he's coming, but I'm starting a year uh, with him in AAA, so uh, just getting him some innings there. He'll eventually get moved up. Um, I actually have, as a relief, I have the same relief pitching, but I do have a rookie here. Eddie Meeks was a guy that I drafted in my first draft He's actually pretty decent. I mean, he has deep potential. That's the only thing. But he's 19 years old, 72 overall. I mean, he his hits per nine is 74, strikeouts 67. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, he's only 19. Maybe I can get him some innings and he'll pitch as well. That potential will go above a D. Because um, I've seen people decline. I've seen people rise in potential. Uh, Steve Geltz is my closer as well. Now, here's the change that I'm making. So, Jet Bandy and Nottingham. I'm having Nottingham start at the major league level. And he's not only starting at a major league level, he's gonna be my starting catcher because in the spring training I played with him, he had a significantly better spring training than Jet Banny. I was letting them duke it out for that catcher spot. So Jacob Nottingham gets the nod. He's our starting catcher. No surprise here. Eric Thames is our first baseman. Garrett Cooper actually moved down because he was a good uh, pinch hitter, but he didn't really play too much and I didn't really need him. So I want a good utility guy and that's where Hernan Perez comes in. Jorge Mateo gets the nod. The 23 year old came from the Yankees, got traded to the Mets. Now he's on the Brewers. He's gonna be that, he's gonna bat lead off. I mean, he has 92 speed, 78 stealing. So I'm gonna need that speed. He actually had a really good spring training. He hit 300. Um, I remember my first at bat with him. He had a single up the middle, second at bat was a home run. So I was like, whoa. Uh, he's ready to take somebody's spot. Travis Shaw gets the nod at third base. He had a great year last year. He hit 287, a whole 46 ticks above the year before. That's a huge improvement. Arcia gets the nod at short. Hopefully he has a bounce back year. Jorge Soler gets the start in left. That's no surprise there. Brinson is actually going to be in center this year. And Broxton actually had a really, really good spring training, which is pretty surprising i mean he he hasn't really hit look at his career he hasn't hit above 250 in his whole career but he had a great spring training i mean it is spring training but we'll see i don't know i'm gonna keep my eye on brox and i don't know how he's gonna do but right now he's gonna be that backup outfielder and in right field i have gutierrez and jose bautista remember we signed jose bautista and the reason why so many teams were passing up on him is because yeah he's 80 overall a potential but He's 38 years old. Nobody's going to commit that kind of money. But who am I going to start in right field? Frank Gutierrez or Bartista? Frank Gutierrez had such a great year with us. But is Joey Bats. You know, what really puts him over the top is his discipline. Discipline's at 91. His clutch is at 71. His vision at 61. Now, let's compare that to Frank Gutierrez. Vision at 29. Discipline at 62. And clutch at 57. And that's significant because... There's a lot of times in games I'm going to need to drive in runs this year because I think this is my year. I think I need to compete for a title this year, the World Series, and I need somebody that's going to be clutch for us. And Braun, ever since we got rid of him, we've been kind of looking for that clutch player. We thought it'd be Brinson. Brinson's been doing pretty good. Uh, Thames is a clutch player as well, but... I need that clutch and Jose Bautista is a clutch player he's clutch at the plate so let's just look at what our lineups is gonna look like so let's just look at no DH since we're in the NL so Jorge Mateo is gonna lead it off second baseman Travis Shaw Lewis Brinson is gonna get that third batting position I mean I'm gonna need him to have a big year he hit 248 last year we're gonna need him to do a little better than last year Jose Bautista, Joey Bat's going to hit four for us. Uh, Jorge Soler is going to hit right after him. Thames is going to hit right after him. 
Nottingham's gonna hit seven, and I love RC in that eight spot because he gets hits down at that eight spot, and uh, he just gets bunted over by the pitcher. So um, left hand, it's really not gonna change to be honest. I mean, it's gonna be pretty much the same. I might swap Travis Shaw and Bautista when it comes to left-handers because if I can get Joey Bats in there batting versus a left-hander, they're not pretty very much off as far as power versus left. I mean, Travis Shaw is a 66. Uh, Bautista 67 but that clutch there at the two spot I might put him up there or I even might put Jorge Soler at uh, the two spot because he hits pretty well versus left hander so who knows um, Thames I like him down here when I was I was batting with him in spring training he was doing pretty good there um, so I actually might move Travis Shaw down and put Jorge Soler up like this um, I actually like this because look at Jorge Soler's hitting zones. He hits pretty well versus lefties. Uh, compared to Travis Shaw, Travis Shaw doesn't hit too well versus lefties, but Travis Shaw is a beast. So actually, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him, Jorge Soler, at the two spot, uh, Travis Shaw down to the five spot just for left handers. And it, because look, I have four straight right handers here, then two straight left handers. So um, I think I can deal with that. I, I can deal with that. And. You know, the reason why I didn't move Garrett Cooper up uh, as far as a backup uh, first baseman is because Joey Bats, look at his secondary positions. He can play first, he can play third and left. So if Travis Shaw gets uh, like he needs a day off or Eric Dames needs a day off, Jose Bautista can slide in there and then I can have Frankie Gutierrez and Jose Bautista in there in the lineup. Um, it feels weird sitting an all-star on the bench because Frankie Gutierrez had such a great year for us, but... I think it has to be done because Joey Bats comes to the Brewers, and we're gonna we're gonna look to have be one of the top offenses in baseball. Uh, that's our goal this year. We're gonna try to win a championship and be one of the top offenses in baseball. Our our pitching is really good. Remember, we were like top six, I believe, in ERA uh, last year. So we're gonna be looking to build off of last season. Um, man, let's just get this season started. Jorge Mateo makes his debut. Jacob Nottingham makes his catching debut rookie season. He gets his first at bat as a Brewer officially. Man, let's just go with this season. Jose Bautista in right. Lance McCullers, we're going up against the Pirates. Garrett Cole, Lance McCullers, let's go. It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Opening day is here as we get the new season underway with a good matchup between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Milwaukee Brewers. So looking where we ranked last year at ERA, we were third in the MLB, first in saves, third in home runs allowed. So we actually dominated on the mound and uh, we're going to be looking to do more of the same this year. But Lance McCullers is on the mound for us. And the Pirates are starting off the game here. Gregory, Gregory Polanco gets a hit up the middle. Jose Abreu comes up next. Jung Ho Kong comes up and pops out to center. So we get to see the debut of Jorge Mateo as a brewer. He leads off the game for us. This is an exciting era that we got. And right away, strikes out on the outside fastball. I swing at some junk there. And Travis Shaw does more of the same swings at a pitch in the dirt. And Lewis Brinson comes up and pops out to first base. So we go down one, two, three. We're looking for this to be a hitting year for us, but it's not looking good in our first inning. But anyway, Lance McCullers does more of what he does. He's striking out a batter to get out of the second inning. And Jose Bautista makes his debut with the Brewers in the four hole. And right away, he gets underneath a pitch and pops it up to the catcher. So Jose Bautista, Jorge Mateo can't get hits in their first at-bats. But Jorge Soler comes up next. And what a great play by Jung Ho Kong. He gets him out on a Derek Jeter jump throw. And Eric Thames looks silly, swinging at an inside fastball. In the next inning, Starling Marte gets a fastball right over the middle. And he takes it over the left field wall. Starling Marte is a pretty good player i mean he has speed um that time he showed the power he's not really known for his power but jacob nottingham actually got his debut there he struck out but look at this on that on that pitch ivan nova comes in for the injured pitcher there he must have done something pulled something or i don't know but 
Jacob Nottingham didn't strike out. He actually popped up to right field. So in his debut, he popped up. But Orlando Arcia finally gets the first hit for the Brewers. So we're finally in the hit column with Ivan Nova on the mound. And here I use uh, Lance McCullers to bunt Arcia over. I give Mateo his first RBI chance, and he pops out to left center field. And, you know, he can't get his first RBI as a Brewer, but it's all right. But here in the next inning, Gregory Polanco is getting a hit to left center. Um, so they have, look at that, he goes in the second with that one. And that's the only thing about having Brinson in center. He doesn't have a great arm, but Jose Abreu comes up next. And he rocks one to right field. The Brewers are going to be down 3 nothing off of the Jose Abreu home run. And right away, we're in trouble. But you know what? In the fifth, Jorge Mateo gets his first hit as a Brewer to the right side. I hope to see more of those hits. And you know when he gets on first, I'm going to be trying to swipe a bag. And here, Travis Shaw hits one down the right field line, advances him to third. I like this, man. I like Travis Shaw in the second spot, especially with some speed in front of him. But Lewis Brinson comes up with a chance to at least tie it and... He pops out the right field, and I'm going to try to tag here, but no, I'm not. I'm not going to try to tag. Jorge Mateo stays on third. That was not deep enough, but Jose Bautista comes up, and on a pass ball, Mateo has the speed to get in, so he scores the first run of the season for the Brewers on a pass ball. And the next pitch, Jose Bautista takes one deep, but it's just not deep enough, so the runner holds at second base. Uh, so Jorge Soler comes up with a chance and he hits a liner to left field. I'm rounding third, but no, no, no. I see that I'm not going to make it. So Travis Shaw goes back to sliding the third and Eric Thames comes up with the RBI chance and strikes out on a high fastball. So he could not get it done there. And here is Lance McCullers first, I mean, last batter in the seventh. So I bring in Taylor Youngman. Lance McCullers gave up three runs, but, you know, it's all right because the offense isn't helping him much at this point. And, uh, but Taylor Gilman comes in, and on two great plays by Thames, we get out of that inning in the seventh. So we are not on to face Nicky Nicas or Juan Nicasio. Uh, look, look at his record. His record was 12-0 and last year. And it's funny because Jacob Nottingham swings at a – fastball right down the middle i don't know how he missed that one but i could bring in franco gutierrez to pinch hit for the pitcher and he's facing nicasio isn't this ironic the time we take Franklin Gutierrez out of the starting lineup for our new free agent acquisition, Jose Bautista. He goes yard. Franklin Gutierrez comes in to pitch hit for the pitcher. It goes yard. 445. That was a monster home run over the left field wall. That almost hit Bernie Sly there. <laughs> but here, Mateo comes up next, and he delivers with another hit. I'm liking Mateo. I mean, he's getting on base. Uh, he's getting hits, and Travis Shaw does what he does best. Look, this is what I'm going to love. Advancing Mateo to third on a single. He's got that speed to get from first to third on those. And Lewis Brinson comes up next. And another pass ball. Mateo comes in to score for the third run of the game. And we tie up the game on that pass ball. And Brinson strikes on a fastball right down the middle. So we had to bring in Brian Shaw here late in the game. And he's facing Polanco. And he gets him to strike out looking this time. And Jung Ho Kong with a little dribbler back to the pitcher, and Shaw throws him out. So we are actually on to the eighth inning, and Jorge Soler grounds out to the shortstop. So we can't get anything done in the eighth, but um, Thames comes up again, strikes out on a high heat there. So the rookie, Jacob Nottingham, comes up, and he walks to start out the inning. And I bring in Hernan Perez to pinch run. Here in the ninth with no outs, and Orlando Arceus swings at a high heat. I'm trying to do a hit and run here, but Hernan Perez gets caught up in a pickle, and he's eventually going to get run down here. So I bring in Keon Broxton to pinch hit 
for the pitcher, and he pops out to the second baseman. But uh, we're on to the 10th inning. Jorge Mateo, his first game as a Brewer, he delivers with his third hit of the game. He's having a major impact on the top of our lineup, getting on base. And here he gets his first stolen base as a Brewer, so that's going to be a good sighting there. And here on this ground ball, I get a little bit greedy. I try to time it so that I go to third base right when the shortstop throws it, and I eventually get thrown out at third. But it doesn't matter because I advance Travis Shaw to second anyway. So uh, Brinson comes up, and he's having a horrible game. He didn't get a hit this whole game. And Jose Bautista swings and misses at a low pitch there. And they bring in Daniel Hudson here in the 11th inning to face Jet Bandy. What do you know it as soon as I put him on the bench in the debut of Jacob Nottingham, he goes deep, Jet Bandy. And two things I learned from this game. Frank the Gutierrez gets his spot back. I think that I'm so used to hitting with him that when he came back and hit that home run, it was kind of a flashback to last season. He remember he was our only all-star, so that's gonna do it for this episode. Jacob Nottingham is going to keep his spot. I'm not going to give up on him, but Jose Bautista, I think he just has to give up his spot to Franco Gutierrez because it's Franco Gutierrez's spot first. But hit subscribe, hit that like button. We'll be back for the next episode. <laughs>